all righty what is going on ladies and gents welcome back to the channel for another market update hope everybody's having a lovely day and with that being said let's get into the ta all right guys so another day in chop city here i'm just kidding because yesterday was not chop city we got some nice price action yesterday but today guys they are just kind of trading you flat here I do think things are set up to go higher. So I'm going to start the video off with that. We have 11 minutes left on the session. And I, I, you know, I, I think it's pretty clear, at least to me, that things look more bullish than not right now. Okay. You come over here to QQQ, more bullish than not. Spy, more bullish than not. All right. So we're going to start here on the daily time frame. Let's just give a little outlook here. Okay, guys, you have a bullish candlestick. What I don't like about this is what the heck is this volume? That's comical. What the heck is this volume? That's also comical. What about IWM? Comical volume. All right. What do we have on SMH? Eh, slightly higher. All right. What do we have on the old DIA? Not so comical. But what the heck is this over here in SPY, guys? So you do have a hammer candlestick. You're not getting a close above here, which is what you wanted to confirm that hammer can candlestick that you're probably going higher. All right. Um, right. I'm just going to say I'm looking for higher prices. I'm looking for 520. Um. You know, why Why am I looking for 520? Guys, the top of this rising wedge would align somewhere around that 520 mark. And we know that's a psych level. So that is that. All right. Now, again, yes, you're in this rising wedge. You have the mass amounts of divergences. But guys, we've been over this before. And I told you guys, this is what happens in bull markets, which is exciting stuff. You notice how, let's just go over this, guys. Notice how you didn't see any of that action here. This was your bear market. This is what I call the bear market. People don't have to refer to it as the bear market, okay? Um, but, you know, you dropped over 20%. As of right here, you were in bear market territory. And everyone probably flipped, flipped their, you know, butts over here. And they were like, oh, crap, what's going on? Oh, no. And then, boom, you ripped faces, okay? That's a bear market for you. And I was used to trading a bear market for a while. But, guys, a bull market is kind of different. Okay, in the bull market, you kind of just, you know, your warning signs here on the daily time frame, they can do this. And, you know, eventually we're going to get this, but it's not going to take out that previous low like people think is going to happen. And, you know, bears are going to be like, oh, it's crashing. It's finally going to happen. And then, no, you, you don't crash. And what actually happens, you recover. Where do you recover? You recover in the golden pocket. Uh, that's not quite the golden pocket. I, I thought I was seeing something. What about this next one? We got this guy right here. Where do you recover? In the golden pocket. All right. What about, let's just move this right over here. Let's just move that. Right, uh, what was it saying right here? Oh, there we go. Where do you recover? In the golden pocket. And then you carry on. And then again, golden pocket. And you carry on. And then again, golden pocket. And then you carry on. Any of these, you could, you know, you see what I'm saying, guys? So that's what happens in a bull market. I think we're in this. I, I do. I think we're in this. Maybe we even get some crazy stuff, okay? 10%. But let's just look at it this way. 10% is bringing you right down here. You buy that dip, okay? I don't think that's going to happen. I think the deepest pullback you're probably going to see is 480. But I am so open to a 450 to 480 correction here. Okay, guys? But I don't think that time is now. All right? Now, we're going to have to see how today closes, but so far, you do have a hammer candlestick. So, um, no, you do not. Look at that. Oh, kind of. You're kind of holding on. You're like I'm telling you guys, they're just killing premiums today. They're consolidating you. You had, you had, it was a chop fest all day. You had like no range on the day. All right. Oh, not a hammer candlestick anymore, guys. Look at what's going on. All right. Good thing we're recording the video right now. All right. So, now that things are tanking and we don't have such a bullish look on that daily chart, let's stop talking about the daily chart, guys. What are we talking about now? All right, first things first, you kind of do have a head and shoulders look to this, all right, and also is right there. All right, so there's that. But you're down here in the golden pocket. Now, if you come down here and take out the slow, and you have a higher high there, you're going to have a bullish divergence there. But I am just going to put this one out there, all right? You stalled out here. You had the bearish divergence. We were, you know, saying, guys, hey, all right, there's that. I, I still do think you're going to come up and take out the high. I don't think it makes sense to have the day we had yesterday, and then you're just going to fall flat. I think we're probably going to break above the high, all right? Break above that high right there. I think it's very likely, okay? Um, but you come over here to QQ, guys, and I do think a large move is setting up. Is it going to be the downside? No idea. If you break this trend line, then I have to assume, yeah. 
All right, that would suck, and it would go like that. Okay, that could be the case. Do I think that'll be the case? No, I do not think that'll be the case. I think what's much more likely is even if you do sell down here, I think you're probably going to find buyers here. You got this demand zone going on. You got this trend line going on. I think you're probably going to find buyers and make your way back up here, at least into the golden pocket. All right, so that's really what I'm looking at right there. Come over here to SPY. And um, I will just say, guys, as long as you got this lower wick here, I don't think this looks bad. I think you're just consolidating after yesterday's big day. You're killing premiums, and then they're probably going to send it. Or you have another day of consolidation, and then they send it. I have absolutely no idea, just like you have absolutely no idea. But we can't use the clues that we are given. I'm just saying, this four-hour chart looks more bullish than not. You had, your, your warning sign was right here. Your little crystal ball was this four-hour hammer that printed right here. People are bearish. I was not bearish, okay? Yeah, it doesn't look the best on the hourly, but it looks really good on the four-hour. So that's why, guys, we're going to watch the weekly, the daily, the four-hour, the one-hour, the 15-minute, and the five-minute. That is what you'll always see here on this channel, not so much the five-minute. Weekly candlestick, guys, is not shaping up to be a bearish one, but that is disgustingly low volume. It is Wednesday. Um, let's have a high volume. OPEX, guys, that's going to be increasing volume. So we're going to have to see where we go. What do we also have tomorrow, guys? We got the PPI data. The PPI data is the next big catalyst. It's going to be taking us in one direction or the other. This is either going to turn into a bearish candlestick or it's going to turn into a really bullish candlestick. My guess, judged by this daily chart, is we're still going to see a move to the upside. So, uh, you know, my guess is that's going to be a, a bullish candlestick by the end of the week. How is QQ looking? All right. Not looking the best. Okay, it was looking, you know, relatively greener the other day, but, but, all right, we're going to have to see how this thing shapes up because this don't look the best. IWM, you just consolidate. Now, this is something that I will argue looks pretty darn decent. All right, guys, and, you know, golden pocket inception all over the place, guys. You don't really need to use anything else. All right. Golden pocket freaking accept, uh, inception. Where was it? Boom, boom, boom. All right, boom, boom, boom. All right, guys, so, like, just know, like, it's a tool that a lot of people use, and because a lot of people use it with big money, they move the stocks, all right? That's that's really how it works, all right? There's, you know, there could be algos to buy off that, but it's probably just people with large amounts of money looking at the same thing and doing that. There's that. So let's see how this closes, guys. If we get a close, we're going to go over the individual tickers. If we get a hammer candlestick... We are going to assume that we're probably going to be seeing some upside. But then again, we do have volume suggesting that candle is a lie. So does it really matter? Are we going to get an end of the day pump? I have absolutely no idea. Let's move on to what I want to take a look at. All right. Avco, guys, I think this thing is bottoming. All right. Or, or you're going to come down here and maybe fill this gap. I have no idea, but I do think we have a, a, a buying opportunity coming right here. What I will tell you right now is if you bought the same exact price the other day like I did, premiums are killed, all right? So, you know, you're going to get a way better price right now than the other day. But I'm just putting it out here. If this thing is going to bounce, it's probably going to be like right here, and you can come over here. Now, I listen, guys, I'm just putting it out here, and this is my opinion. I don't think it's a right thing. So, like, right now in the market we're in, I'm not going to say there's right or wrong, but let's look at AMD. You got the same thing going on down here. And if you were to see price down here, I think that's a great buying opportunity. You come over here to NVIDIA. What the heck is the look of this thing, guys? This thing looks like it's going to rocket ship into tomorrow. Maybe. We're going to have to see what happens. You had consolidation after your big day yesterday. And honestly, guys, I think this thing still wants 1000 bucks. So, like, there's that. I told you guys, that was your buying opportunity. It hit the gold of pocket. All right? It was from here down to here. 8, 815 up to 850. Massive buying opportunity. Now 876.95 was the breakout level. I thought it was probably gonna hold, but then again, you had the golden pocket sitting right underneath. So you just don't know. Golden pocket took took the crown. Okay. It's always the golden pocket. Don't disrespect the golden pocket. All right. Next thing we're gonna be taking a look at is a firm. A firm is in a tight range right now. You got about three weeks of consolidation going on right here, 16 trading sessions. And you are still getting rejected from the top side up here. Let's take off extended hours. Okay. Guys, this thing looks like it's queuing up to break out. 
I'm just putting it out there. So you did have increasing volume on the day. It did look significantly better here on the daily, and you did have a weekly can uh, hammer candlestick over here. If this thing looks like you have buyers stepping in here, and uh, I think you're going to be successful buying, you know, a little time on here. I think you're going to get to ride it up to these these higher levels, okay? Like potentially 47 beans. If this thing gets moving and grooving, it can go pretty quick. All right, you kind of just, you know, have these big days and, you know, maybe we're going to see one of those big days around the corner because you have three weeks of consolidation and that's kind of just what happens when you have consolidation over here on Mr. Affirm. You eventually break out whichever way and you get a decent move. All right, is it going to be the downside? I don't know. My guess is gonna it's going to be to the upside. I like what I'm seeing over here. Next thing we're going to look at is going to be the same exact thing, Roku. All right. Except, do we have three weeks on this one? The same price? Just about three weeks, okay, guys? It does look like this thing is queuing up to move to the upside. I also will point out, you have a slight one of these bad boys going on, uh, with this being the neckline right there, with that touch point, that touch point, that touch point, and uh, bring it a little over. There you go. All right. But... I'm just going to say, same situation as a firm, guys. If you see a daily close above this 6586 level here, just like over here on a firm, it was 3951. If you see that, you're breaking to the upside from this range. Now, you want to see volume on this breakout. And if you can't see that, I do think you're going to start moving and grooving over here on Roku. Roku is another one of those guys that once it gets moving and grooving, it could go pretty quick. All right. So I think I'm catching one of these guys. Maybe it's going to fake us out and do that. And I'm going to be like, crap, man, you little piece of poop. Because you do have the gaps in down here, but I'm just putting it out there. You got the daily RSI. You do have a bullish divergence sitting here on your daily RSI. Let me just mark that out for anybody who cannot say that. There you go. You did have this little falling wedge type of thing. Break and retest. I think this thing looks like it's about to break to the upside. So put it on your radar. Have fun. All right. Now. We have a market that has closed. Let's look at the result. Guys, we have a daily hammer candlestick going on over here. We do have that decreasing volume that does suggest this could be a lie. We come over here to QQQ and we do not have a hammer candlestick. You have a, what is that? That's actually a bearish belt hold, I think it's called. All right, you get the slight lower wick going on. You do have that uh, decreasing volume over here. Guys, what we're watching from here, all right, you got the golden pocket. If you take out the golden pocket, if you sell underneath 437, that is when this is going to be on the table down here. Until you see that, I would not get really bearish if you see this sell right here. I don't think it's worth it. I think you're probably going to see this 15-minute RSI down here, and I think we could potentially just form something and hold the line right here, and then, boom, you're going to see this arrow, that 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 path, the bullish path, get followed. And then if you can break to the upside out of this pattern, considering it is a pattern that took quite some time, all right, a whole week to, you know, form, the breakout's probably going to be longer than a week here, it's probably going to be longer than this, this little range we're in, okay, it could be a big move, there's that, could finally bring us up to Henry's $450 target, we're going to see, we are going to see, over here on Q, uh, not QQ, on SPY, what are we paying attention to over here, guys, I am just putting it out there, you have been in this rising wedge. If you break down from the rising wedge, I don't know what to tell you. It could get ugly. I think we had one that broke down not too long ago. Was that it? Could have been it. Um, or was it over here on QQQ? Ba, 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 da, da, da. Right there? I don't know. We had a rising wedge somewhere over here that, that broke down. And it produced like that. Yeah, I think it was right here. Uh, regardless, I mean, you had the 15-minute bearish divergence also on QQQ right here, so that was also a thing. Um, if we do push up and we take out this high, guys, and you've managed to take out 518.22 because we have PPI tomorrow morning. So if we take that out, guess what? Guess what? We're going to be watching for the 15-minute bearish divergence. We're going to see if this thing holds. And from that point, I don't think it's going to be too much of a higher high here. If we were just to head up there tomorrow... 521 to 522 that's you know really where i'm looking before a pullback that is that okay you could q all right 450 you guys know we, we just spoke about qq iwm now that you've closed out what are we looking at what are we looking at huh not too bullish looking it's just literally sitting here but i will point out all right you had like buyers stepping in here 
all right, yesterday, and then you also had this channel breakout when you had this, uh, did you have a 15 minute bullish diversion? No, you did not, all right? Either way, you had the channel breakout, that was that. I could have swore there was something I saw that marked this. There was not, there was not, there was not, there was not. I'm thinking of another ticker then. Take that guy off right there, you take that guy off right there, guess what? You're finding buyers in your demand zone. You had this, you know, downtrend break here. It like doesn't look too bad on the smaller time frames. So that's literally what I was just showing you guys over here. Um, but you come over here to the daily time frame. Look at this, guys. You literally just yeah, you find a buyers where you broke out from. That's not the worst look in the world. We were looking for the move up to 210, like 209.50, I think we're saying. Yeah, bottom of this demand zone, 2940 right there. Um, yeah, guys, you could just be having a pullback along the way. You didn't even see the daily RSI get up here. So I'm just saying. If you see the whole market go, you know, everything's probably going to go. DIA just had a bull flag breakout. This thing, we were, we were pointing that one out for quite some time over here. You're consolidating. Guys, same, you know, thing we just talked about over there on those two tickers, Roku and Affirm. Consolidation. This is all, this two and a half weeks of consolidation. I do think it's probably going to result in some, some more upside here. All right. But that's really how I'm looking at the indices. So far, we do have a bullish look to the week. There you go. Bullish engulfing candlestick, and it looks like it will be increasing volume considering we have the OPEX Friday. Now, I don't know what's going to happen at the end of the week, but if I had to guess what's going to happen tomorrow, we're going to go up. Or, you know, we'll have tame PPI. Maybe you get that pullback into here, and then you go up. But regardless, we got a, two bullish candlesticks in a row. Doesn't, you know, look too bearish to me. It looks like buyers are still stepping in. Now, what does look not the best is over here in SMH, all right? Depends how you want to look at it. You do have this head and shoulders formation. If you break down from that, it's probably just going to go something like this. And then you bounce if I had to take a guess, all right? Um, but you could also just come down here into a seven, and that would be, you know, where you had your big breakout. So uh, I do think, you know, it's, it's really not looking too bad, guys. It's not. You do have this head and shoulders here. Uh, you like, do you even have a bearish divergence going on here? 78, 79. Yeah, you do. You do. Okay. Semi is still, you know, they, they still got their daily warning sign, but then you got things like this over here on Mr. NVIDIA. How did NVIDIA close guys? Close with a, you know, a hammer candles that going on here. You did not have the increasing volume, but it really doesn't look all too bad. Now back to the first ticker I was talking about, Avco guys. If you got chips with the four hour RSI is being oversold, like it doesn't matter how long you want to go back here. Well, I mean, I guess it does, you know, matter. But at least for, like, a while now, these have provided your pullbacks. And maybe, if, yeah, maybe you can convince everybody you're crashing like that. And you do end up selling decently under that. And it's like that minus $50 move. But, you know, more often than not, you're not going to see that. And you're going to see the thing bottoming down here in a market like this. So, you know, you got that going on. You got NVIDIA looking like how I just showed. You got AMD looking like this. You had TSM. I think that was, you know... Like, like, guys, if you sell off a little bit more, I'm not looking for much. I really don't think this supports, like, this whole big pullback that I think a lot of people think is going to happen. And I just don't think it's going to happen. Uh, I, I think, you know, we're still in buy the dip mode. Call me a permanent bull you want. I think we're in buy the dip mode. I really do. I, I'm going to conclude the video with that, guys. You have Goog with a daily breakout today, increasing volume. You do have that fresh wick. Maybe uh, tomorrow, maybe you do end up seeing that. I would like you, you know, not see that. I would like to see that faded, and then that could be its strength for the next move because any shorts that got involved there, you get over the high. All right, they're underwater. Boom. Okay. Um, it would just be a bullish mess. It would be a really bullish mess, guys. Cost consolidating after yesterday's uh, move up. All right, we point this out on this day right here. It was getting down towards our support level. Nike, all right, break and retest. Proved to be successful. There you got going on over there. What I will put some light on is BA. What the heck is this thing doing, guys? What you were paying attention to over here is the next support all the way down near 176. We're talking 176.53. 176.25 is what we're talking. That's quite insane. Okay, the fact that this thing just kept dying is insane to me. It really is. But yeah, you broke down, guys. You know, maybe this wasn't a direct falling wedge, and maybe this really was just a you know pennant you broke down from the pennant <laughs> okay or a descending triangle you know uh guys 20 2372 is what you kind of hold over there on the rsi if this thing's going to find buyers it's going to be soon 
All right. If this divergence is going to hold, it's going to be soon. All right. Within days, you're not going much lower because you can't afford to have this RSI go lower. All right. So you're probably going to start seeing buyers step in relatively soon, which is why I mentioned right here. I know you got that 176 level, um, but somewhere in between here and here, I do think this thing is going to bottom. Just putting it out there. All right. I think that is pretty much it. I'll actually lastly point out that, guys, you know, Bitcoin is looking good. All right, Bitcoin is looking good. You're on the weekly time frame. It does look like it's going to continue higher. You got this thing looking amazing, all right? And then you got this thing looking garbage, okay? So I do want to point that out. I think this is, but like, so they announced that they're going to be, they're not doing like a dilution kind of thing, all right? But they are, you know, raising money through like, it was a slightly different way. Um, But what's it called? They're not doing it right now, but I think that's 100% why the sentiment died today. Out of absolute... I don't even know, okay? I, I don't even know. All I know is I looked at the chart and it was like 10... It was like 8 to 10 bucks lower than when I last looked at it. It was like, Shiza. That is... Big L. L City. L City right here. This thing turned so bullish into so bearish so quick, all right? I'm just putting it out there, all right? You had a big fat weekly hammer candlestick right here at the high today. And now it's looking like that. Guys, you have another down day. This thing ain't going to be looking so good. But, all right, there's something good that is coming out of this. If it does turn into a pullback, we're going to be watching this zone right here. You already flipped it. Well, you already got over here. Now we're seeing if you have proof that you flipped it. All right, our buyer is going to step in here. We're going to be watching from this point, 225, all the way down to 210. That's your buy zone if you are willing to take, you know, it's not a break and retest. That would be all the way down here at 187. I personally don't think that'll be the case. But if it is the case, guess what? You found buyers right there. Can we see anything that aligns with that? Kinda. All right. Kinda, 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 sorta. Bottom of that breakout zone would be the golden pocket. That would align with that. So you got confluence here. You got confluence here. That's what I'm looking for if you were to sell off this. Now, I will also point this out. I think this thing is, uh, I think this is going way higher. All right. With what Bitcoin's doing, I, I do think Bitcoin's coming up here to 80K. All right. And if that's going to be the case, I think coin is coming up here to, you know, we're, we're talking 280, guys. It's right around the corner. It's the next resistance. And you really decide to sell right before it. I will put it out there. I did not have the supply zone. And, you know, you did stall out exactly at the supply zone. That is, that is funny, you know. Everyone's prone to prone to mistakes, guys. That is that is part of the game. I make mistakes. Oh well. That that is all I could say. That is that's what you get for making a rush decision, guys. That is what you get. All right. You're dealing with the customer and you try making a rush decision. It's gonna, you know. Things are always gonna you know, there you go. Don't make rush decisions. Unless you're a day trader and you know you're you're training yourself to make those rush decisions. There you go. All right, guys, but Break over here. Break over 281.99, guys. And you have nothing in between here and here. Okay? Like, literally nothing. So, that is what I think is uh, on the table here. So, if you get to buy this thing, I want to talk about it now. If you do see the pullback. All right? There you go. I also so will say, if you just break over here, I think, you know, it's game on. I think it could be doing some crazy things. Boom, 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 boom. All right? So, that is that, guys. That is pretty much everything I got for you today. Just to sum everything up, guys. Indices, they're really not looking so bad. You've ended with a hammer candlestick, all right? I understand this is going to be the fourth video that I'm just saying. Guys, I'm looking for higher prices. But, you know, on all of these videos, I've had a reason to say these things, all right? Down here, it's probably been like a week I've been saying I'm bullish. Why? Because, guys, I was looking for the pullback when it made sense to look for the pullback. You just want to see something? All right, you had the bearish divergence here. Okay, that's like when price was not where it is right now. Price was here. Your boy was bearish. I wasn't saying I was looking for all this, but guess what? I was definitely open to at least a $5 pullback, and I told you when it was going to pop up. It's right here in this candlestick right here. I think we recorded the video somewhere around here. Or, no, nah, it, was, it was an early video that day. It was right over here. I was like, guys, I'm looking for it. Um, but guess what? You've like had reasons to be bullish down here. You had bullish divergence sitting down here. Okay. We're not even talking QQ. We're talking SPY. You had divergence. All right. On QQ over there, but you also had your demand zone, your trend line. 
Okay, you also had, I believe it was the Golden Pocket right here. Like, we have reasons to be bullish when we're bullish. We really do. Golden Pocket, yeah. You like, again, respect the Golden Pocket. It will respect you if you respect it. So there's that. But then you come over to the daily time frame, and we're just looking at, uh, like, guess what? You have this going on. Okay? You have this hammer candlestick being printed off of a demand zone, a breakout level here. Okay? You... Like, that does not look bearish. And then you have this. This also does not... It looks the exact opposite of bearish. And then you have this follow-up. To me, the, guys, it doesn't look bearish. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Let's look at this four-hour chart. Does this look like something that's just about to roll over and die? It could roll over and die. But again, I just showed you. You have all these lower wicks. It, buyers are very clearly trying to push this thing higher. You see how you didn't have any lower wicks here? All right, let's go look at a downtrend. A pro, like we, we've had pullbacks. Okay, but let's look at something that actually ended up selling right here. Okay. You see this right here? The pullback was bought. You see that right there? And then you printed that and it went higher. And then you printed that and you didn't have a reason to just say, like, hey, I think we're going to go higher tomorrow. I think it wants to be bought up. All right. And then you stopped with the hammers. Look at this. You didn't have these long lower wicks. We have a ton of the lower wicks on the daily time frame right now. I think buyers are still pre present. Right here, you started to get... This wasn't a hammer, but that lower wick is larger than the upper wick right there. And what happened? Buyers started stepping in. Guys, they leave their signs. All right, right here. Now, I'll tell you right here. No. Okay, you did end up selling. But, you know, at that point, you're full on in a daily downtrend. And we see what's going on here. You see all these lower wicks and you went higher? Like, you see this? Okay, you went higher. You gapped up. Okay? Right here, you did not. You, you, you ended up, you did not. I, I will give you that one. You stalled out. At, you found buyers stepping up here at support. It looks like they were, they were trying to hold you, and then you faded it. And that's actually what I was looking at over firm. Now that we have this candlestick, if you can manage to fade this, uh, this upper wick here, but like, you know, in the, I'd say fade is in like, if you can get past this and so not fade, if you can rise to the occasion, then I think that's a pretty powerful setup. I think you very quickly probably have something like that on your hands. All right. So there was that. And then upstart is another one that is, uh, been just consolidating this range. You had this false breakout. looks like I'm like, what the heck, dude, that's crazy. It looked pretty bullish to me. But uh, as well, yeah, they, they flip the guys. They have a very, they have a strong hat. I have actually a habit of seeing these weekly charts getting really bullish all of a sudden, making impulsive decisions. And then uh, they fade it by the end of the week. And then guess what? They don't have a bullish hammer candlestick in a bullish pattern. And it's, you know, no longer looking picture perfect to me. I'm like, but it was looking so good. I'm like, Jeez Louise. All right. So guys, you know, if you also find yourself having that bad habit, I say bad habit because it's not good for my wallet. Um, you know, you find, and that's, that's what in my mind makes a habit good or bad. All right. Is this uh, helping you or is it not helping you? If there's no benefit to it, then it's a bad habit. If there is a benefit to it, then there's, it's a good habit. That's how I look at things. This is a bad habit, guys. I, I like seeing closes because closes equal confirmation. You entering before that, if you're going off of like a daily time frame or a weekly time frame, you know, it's not the best thing. I'm just going to put it out there. Okay. So there is that. So if you, you know, are like me and you do have that habit to, you know, occasionally jump the gun there, then there you go. That is your fix. Just buy towards the end of the day. So you can always see that the big picture going into the next day. Because if it looks good in the morning, you have a whole lot of time to mess up that picture, just like you have over here on Mr. Affirm. I will say right now, I think this thing does look like it's, you know, you clearly do have buyers stepping in here. Um, there's that. All right, guys. So that is pretty much everything I got for you. I'm bullish. I know we got a 30-minute video. It's a nice laid-back video over here today. Um, I had a good time chatting with you guys. I hope you guys enjoy these videos. They really are the, uh, I would say, they're the highlight of my day. I get to come on here and just be myself, talking to a bunch of people, which is, you know, normally the exact opposite. But, you know, this is kind of, I've gotten really comfortable with you guys over the year and a half, I guess. Year and a half, not two years. I think it's been like a year and a half. Um, either way, guys, 
I hope you guys enjoyed the update. I appreciate you guys. Love you guys. And I will catch you all in the next one. Everybody have a lovely rest of your day. And peace.